welcome viewers so two months back we had uh, made a video on one of the logistics company called ages logistics and two months have passed and in the last two months certain things have changed uh, in terms of the chart some new business updates have come so we thought of making update video but the bigger goal uh, for making this video was when we do research of a company uh, when we do the first analysis that is like only 15 20% of the work and actually whether it comes to you know investing books or it comes to you know investing blogs or video buy has been given lot of importance but what happens post buy uh, that is rarely spoken about and in an investing journey this whole period of buy contributes hardly 15 20% of the whole journey post by how the allocation shapes up how the monitoring happens how the tracking happens if the decision goes right or wrong uh, how the uh, balancing of the portfolio happens how the sell happens all that is rest 80% of the journey which is not spoken about so i thought i will take ag as an example and show how to do the activities related to you know the allocation decision making tracking post buy and that is the purpose of this video so so if you are interested to know how to cover the, this journey beyond just doing a first level analysis of any stock watch this video till the end what we are going to cover is first what kind of investing opportunity ages logistic has been uh, second how much price can fall uh these two points because i get a lot of queries around you know the price fell by 20% what to do this that so we will cover this third how i manage my investment in such opportunities because investing is not static taking the first analysis and buying the first position there is much more life beyond that so how i manage my opportunities do i buy in one go or uh, how do i manage it and then the updates on ages since we did the ages video which you can see in the link provided in description uh what are the business updates which have happened as well as what are the price and charts based updates which have happened and uh, the last is uh, what are the key things to monitor in ages going forward so let us start the first thing first what kind of opportunity ages is and ages has been a value by opportunity with some key risks and when i say value buy basically if you see the stock has fallen almost 50% when we made the presentation two months back it was hovering around a 200 price band and the stock made a high of 381 you know one year back so it comes in value not because the price has fallen 50% but usually a fall of 50% of price highlights optimism pessimism and that is where usually value emerges and good price and good news they don't come together so uh, value in value investing it is more pessimistic uh, and that is why you know uh, there could be a chance and possibility of value the stock usually will not be in the books of traders because uh, the stock is making higher lower lower lows and lower highs it will be below the closing price will be below all the typical moving averages and all so it will be out of traders radar usually such stocks are in stage four or stage one of price time correction so when we look at the market cycle usually if you know basics of technicals it will be divided into four you know four stages so basically your stage four is the stage at which the stock goes in downtrend and the price keep falling and stage one is usually the stage where the downtrend falls stops and the price starts consolidating it doesn't move up but it stops going down and uh, you know the momentum is missing uh, the one the one big hypothesis of value investing is uh, you are investing in uncertainty when there is no optimism and uh, pessimism is high however good businesses and good management they do bounce back the cyclicity reversion to mean all of that work and then there is a little margin of safety so that is the kind of opportunity we are looking at and uh, question is how much prices can fall because you know when it fell from 200 to 170 i got few messages so again nothing whatever we do nothing is a investment advice uh, it is all analysis we get benefited from various youtube channels and hence we also share our views uh, and the idea is to share and learn uh, but uh, nothing is a recommendation and everybody needs to do their own analysis however uh, how much prices can fall so thing is 
valuation is never an exact number and there are many things apart from earnings in short term which drive valuation based on the buyer supply demand so valuation is always a range and not an exact number and also as uh, john kain said markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent and same goes with the stock also the stocks can remain irrational when there is a pessimism they can keep going down and down when there is a optimism they can keep going and up and up and they can go much more higher or lower with respect to the valuation and valuation is never exact number it's a range so let us remember this because this is significant from the perspective of how much prices can fall so only there are two things certain death and taxes which means the prices can go beyond our limits and also the decisions can also go wrong out of 10 decisions not all 10 decisions will go right some decisions will go wrong again i am not scaring you but i am just telling you this is how the equity and investing world behaves so how do i manage these kind of value investments so what i do is so first thing uh, is identifying the valuation and as i said valuation is a range uh it's not exact number so i try to do a valuation exercise i try to find a valuation range which might fluctuate somewhere between 20 to 40% based on the margin of safety then i try to divide the total amount which i can invest in a specific company if everything goes as per assumption i divide into three four tranches and uh, i keep those tranches to be invested in this 20 to 40% band uh, at uh those key technical levels where the stock could find support and then i keep allocating based on these analysis assumptions opportunities and risk uh given uh, you know those assumptions and those opportunity and risks are the way uh you know uh when it was analyzed in the beginning and also it needs regular monitoring because equity is all about monitoring doing the first analysis is one thing but things change in one year risks might trigger and we should never be hesitant to accept mistakes and cut losses because out of 10 bets always you know 3 4 bets can go wrong and then add more if either the valuation or the chart or both of them become more attractive with the longer story and you know the overall assumptions are intact so it's not about uh, you do a research you do analysis and you took all the position some people might work in that way but uh, this is how i work and this is how i try to manage my downside risk because the questions might come uh, why not why not you are investing when you know the stock is coming in momentum that could be one way and in certain stocks i believe that works and certain stocks at least for me it doesn't work like if there are stocks which are very you know small cap stocks which are very liquid stocks where in one you know 2 3 day 40% kind of movement can come and if i am not somebody who is tracking the market 10 to 3 i might miss the, those opportunities also uh, tracking a stock fundamentally uh, you know understanding concept of valuation it gives extra edge uh, in terms of understanding the company better and having that market you know margin of safety where you build one initial position to have skin in the game and track and then you know as you say the technicals developing you keep increasing your position so uh, next comes what are the key updates on the business uh, so again uh, in uh, on ages side i have taken the first tranche and i can deploy three more equal tranche but i am waiting for you know other things to fall in place and if you remember the first video itself somewhere i would have told that you know once the acquisition will happen the cash will come on books the numbers might look bad uh, because uh, all of a sudden you have so much of cash which will not be deployed and all of that so market may not uh, reward it that way so position may not uh, depending on story to story you may not need to build all the position in one go also the charts were still in downtrend so the downtrend needs to stop so combining these fundamental technical there could be reasons why we can build position gradually now coming to update so one uh, ages uh, released a investor presentation where there is a lot about uh, you know what are their future growth plans and all so you can go and you can you know uh, go through this investor presentation but second update which has happened on the business side is they have done one acquisition so uh, they have done acquisition of a liquid terminal tank from friends group and this liquid terminal tank is located in kandla port and uh, 
this capacity is 5 lakh KL capacity. So if you remember our last video, Aegis has a 8.6 lakh KL capacity across all the ports. So this is almost a 60% expansion in the liquid capacity. And again, from the last video, you know, uh, this is liquid is a higher margin business, higher profitability margin business. And the money which Aegis is paying for this deal is 265 crores. And this is for the, uh, you know, they're, they're doing through 100% subsidiary. And uh, this will be done through a combination of, uh, you know, uh, cash and debt, internal accrual and debt. So uh, we thought of analyzing, is this deal a good deal or a bad deal? So I am walking you again through some of the old presentation slides. And uh, you should watch this whole video if you have not watched this video. So if we see this is the gas division, this is the liquid division, and this is the PBT of liquid division, uh, you know, in, on a TTM basis. So this age is 8.6 lakh KL is generating 136 crore of PBT. And uh, this is a, of course, a high, you know, high margin business to identify whether the price paid for this acquisition is a good price or bad price. What I have done is let us go through some of the latest CapEx expansion, which Aegis has done. And you can see they have done a liquid CapEx expansion across Haldia, across Mangalore. And both have been around 50,000 KL, 50, 53,000 KL expansion. And the total project cost was 35 crore, which means if we want to create a new capacity of 50,000, 53,000 KL, you need to invest 35 crore. So if you need to do a capex of 5 lakh KL, which is almost 10 times higher, you need to do a project cost of 350 crores. However, for this acquisition, Aegis has paid almost 265 crores. So on a 350 crore, it is almost more than 20% cheaper. So it looks to me this acquisition has not been done with a big cost, but we are not yet sure of the financial economics of this particular uh, you know, asset acquired, its efficiency, its margin. So, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a kind of gray analysis, you can say, but given the limitation of data, this is the best way we could do it. The other way to look at it is, Aegis does a 173 crore of EBITDA on a TTM basis on 8,50,000 KL capacity. So on a 5 lakh KL capacity with the same amount of efficiency and margin and all, Aegis could do somewhere around 100 crore of EBITDA. But let us give 50% discount margin because Aegis has been one of the better companies in terms of ROE capacity, you know, utilization and capital allocation and all. So let us give 50% discount and let us take uh, on this capacity, let us say Aegis will do only 50 crore of EBITDA. So if at a 50% discount, Aegis does a 50 crore EBITDA, and uh, Aegis is paying to 65 crore, uh, you know, to buy this asset, they might need to do some bit of maintenance capex or whatever, but still it's a 5.3 X EBITDA deal, which doesn't look costly. So given all of this analysis, it looks to me with limited data visibility that this is a decent deal. However, things will come out when all the numbers will be out and we'll come to know. So this was about the business update. So because you are uh, uh, dealing with a business which is a significant contributor to profit and there is a 60% expansion happening through this deal. So I thought it was a significant business update, uh, which I should uh, pass it to you. The next is the update on the price and the shorter term scenarios, the price movement, the charts, the shareholding and all. So let me show you the first, the weekly chart of ages. And uh, we presented somewhere around here in February, around 200. And the stock did fall to 170 and it has bounced back. If you see in terms of history, it's the same 170 price, uh, which has come to rescue multiple times here, here, then somewhere here. COVID was the only time when the price went below 170. And this was hardly for one week when, you know, all the technical analysis went for toss. But within, you know, three to four week period, this bounced back. And something similar is happening here. It has bounced back. And even before this fall, if you see, there were some high green volume bars which got created in edges here and here. And if you see the momentum, which is from RSI, uh, the momentum seems to be improving because this, this low has been, this low has been more lower than this. So uh, this is lower than this, but when you see the direction of momentum, the direction of momentum is up. And if you see underperformance compared to Nifty, it was highly underperforming Nifty. This is like a 45 degree plus fall. And now slowly it is stabilizing on a weekly chart. And the volume story, which I told you why the stock took support multiple times here, 
if you see this area this is where the high volume end area ends so they are not much volume was there the price might have fallen more in pessimism and fear but quickly it recovered and at the same high volume bar last high volume bar area the stock has got support if we look at the daily chart so you know i spoke about the four stages and this is the kind of stage four where the price severely falls and people keep averaging down uh, we were uh, we didn't participate in this phase it went up and again it came down so the price still it was in you know low fall mode so we did our analysis somewhere here when the 50% price has fallen i told i have taken my first tranche and now i am in wait and watch mode and i can see some improvements happening again this is only on price behavior ultimately earnings will have to support and last quarter earning was decent it was not as good as which had looked if you look at pad basis it looked very good but remember again i spoke about the esops given in 2020 21 and this year those esops are gone so because you didn't need to pay those esops it looked uh, really good but on the like to like basis it was a okay performance not a very great performance uh, but now if you see from price perspective slowly you can see uh the under performance is reducing now the uh, uh, comparison to nifty so this line represents how the stock is trending with respect to nifty and this was in severe fall and went up and now slowly it looks like you know the under performance is reducing so uh, that is there and also you can see uh this stock created low here went up and created further low and then went up now this time this low has been created at a higher price than this so we don't know if it will sustain still the stock is below some of the key moving averages but the good part is the volumes have come back one volume bar second volume bar two continuous volume bars the low price is higher than previous low but we need to monitor if fundamentally everything goes well and the stock might consolidate for some time and slowly you might see that slowly these moving averages are contracting and the stock might come out of you know this kind of pessimistic scenario so currently i believe the stage 1 is going on sometimes stage 1 goes for 6 months sometimes it goes for 12 months sometimes it can go for you know 18 24 months so we can we need to keep monitoring from a technical perspective and see how the story emerges but the key is this volume bar and from where these volume bars are coming and why did the share price fall stop so if you look at the monthly mutual fund data and see i am telling you all of this because this is how i do my analysis so it's not about just doing first time buy and oh my god the price fell if you will do it that way you know it will not work and uh, you have to be self sufficient so i am just sharing how i do so that if you find some value in it you can replicate for itself or if you have a different process you know there are multiple ways of doing it so i was tracking the monthly mutual fund data and uh, what we see when the prices were falling the mutual funds they were sellers they sold here they sold here and somewhere the selling stopped in november december january and february a big buying has come and that is how you know the fall has stopped and those big green bars have come and who is buying so if you see again it is reflected this is a month over month list of all mutual funds how many shares they were holding when did they buy when did they sell and i use certain tools to do this i will create a separate video in fact there are a lot of very good tools in the market and you know people are not aware of the beauty uh, they provide in analysis so i'll create some separate video if you want me to make that video put comment uh, put yes in the comment line and i will make a separate video for you but these are the mutual funds and you can see all the sellers slowly the sellers are gone in fact the only seller which has here they hold only 741 shares now uh, you know so if they sell it uh, you know it will be gone and rest is all buying happening and quants fund has been buying heavily into it so that is one fund which has been buying heavily uh, nippon has also increased mutilal has increased a bit icici they are buying in some portfolio selling in some portfolio also if you see the uh, you know quarterly behavior of share holding the mutual fund share holding for in last two year one year it has fallen from 2.25% to 0.85% in december and i hope with some of the latest share holding maybe even either they would have sold or they are that is where the bottom is met and also it's a institutional holding company where institutions they hold almost 16% and some selling has come from here so we are not sure if this selling will stop or it will go on we need to monitor and if we look at the retail share holding in last 3 years the retail share holding has been uh, coming down which is down from 7.4% to 13.9% so almost 3.5% of retail share holding has come down so uh, these are the updates so business updates and technical updates the buy sell behavior update the demand supply update 
Now, what we need to monitor is one execution, execution in terms of continuing the assets they are holding. They need to churn the same kind of efficiency and a lot of uh, new capex, new capacity, new acquisition. So, how they perform on all these new areas, we need to see. If you see uh, last two capacity expansion projects are over, uh, I showed you those two 50, 50,000 KL capacity, and now they are contributing. We need to keep an eye on earnings and margins because in the long run, stocks perform only because of earnings. In short run, it is, of course, the price trend optimism pessimism demand supply uh, we need to see how the retail business is doing because this business has not done as per expectation and uh, in our valuation this business had a role to play so we need to see how it performs uh, once uh, i think the deal is done so we need to see how the post deal financials and uses of cash emerges and then we need to track the charts and shareholding data so this is how we need to continuously monitor this story. So this was the update on Aegis. I hope you liked the video. If you like the video, do like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel and you feel there is value, do subscribe and do press the bell icon to get updated so that you know it helps us to reach to more and more people. I will see you with another video. Thank you.